Hey everybody and thank you for coming to my channel once again to check out something that I am putting out for you to hopefully enjoy. We're going to be going over uh, a review and recapping on season 5 episode 11 of Black Ink, Buenos Dias, Puerto Rico. Okay, we're going to go right on to that first scene. We're going to have Woo, Caesar done shut down Black Ink 113. That's the one Teddy's supposed to be managing, and Sky's the one running uh, to make, well, she's running in the position of wanting to be the manager of uh, 113. She's trying to kick Teddy to the curb, which he should be kept kicked to the curb because he really ain't doing nothing but just creating space, pretty much. Uh, but Caesar's not liking what they're doing at 113, so he don't shut the store down, the shop down, until they can show a lot more maturity and handle their business, meaning come in there, do your job, make customers happy so they can be repeat customers, and Black Ink, the one that got started first, can make some money, okay? So he got a mile on punishment. And, um... And then uh, Teddy goes on to try to reveal himself or uh, make Teddy, I mean, make Caesar look at him in a different light by saying, okay, can we get out the doghouse if I can get this trip set up for us to go to some, um, what do you call it, convention in Puerto Rico with showcasing all the top tattoo artists and we can bring our merchandise and sell and make money hand over fist. So, of course, Caesar like an idea the part of making money hand over fist. So he listens to Teddy's idea and he says, okay, I think King Caesar can get with that idea and if you pull it off, I will reopen 113 so y'all can start making y'all coins again. So then we move from that situation, we go to Duchess and her father and her best friend, BB are at uh, I think it's called Blackstone Shooting Range in North Carolina and she's uh, kind of upset and angry and so she's taking some gun lessons at the shooting range and trying to work out some of her hostility much of it stems from caesar and them breaking up and this that and the third so bb lets her know that she did get a confirmation or reminder e email from uh puerto rico about this uh convention that they're having they want her to come out and showcase her stuff as well as uh streamlining some videos from Puerto Rico for Facebook and this magazine that's working with her that's pretty much just gonna I guess fly her out there on them and do a, a interview with her and stuff and so she was like I don't know if I want to do it I don't want to do nothing involving Caesar that he may or may not be at then her dad is getting on her and her best friend is getting on her and they're like hey these are opportunities open up for you your business your brand you can't think about him because y'all run in the same circle so it's going to be inevitable that y'all do see each other from time to time but you can't let him um make, make you this money because you're all up in your feelings and she's still feeling some kind of way but she is actually listening to what they are trying to say to her when it comes to continually solidifying herself in the tattoo field and you know making moves and stuff um so then we leave that situation, we go to Caesar. Caesar tells everyone that he's going to make sure they get a room. He sets up the room for the Puerto Rico trip and this, that, and third. Cause he said he wasn't leaving it to them because it don't matter. It might not be the place that he want to stay. That if he let uh, Teddy or, or Sky or anybody like that pick the place, you know, he just didn't want to leave it to any kind of chance that he would be, you know, living in something for a short while uncomfortably so he said uh -uh, i'm gonna pick the digs so he flies them out have rent a car to take them to the place that they're gonna be staying and when they get there they're like oh my goodness oh this is you know dope and this that and the third and the house that they're renting out uh in puerto rico is really really nice so he did his thing on that so he tells everybody to go find a room so he could uh, hear all of them just going crazy, talking about different rooms. And when he hears someone describing his room that he know he already selected for himself and Tattoo Baby, huh? And he said, nope, that's not y'all room. Pick another one. Then he knows the room that he set out for Ted. And he's like, nope, that's not your room. And that was Donna's room that she wanted. 
or she had called herself Chooser. And Chad was like, I'll share with you, baby. She's like, okay, we're going to have to check up. Mm -mm. So anyway, um, I think that was for sure. I don't think they actually um, did anything uh, with her staying in that particular room. And so uh, he heard them describing Ted's room. He's like, no, nope, that's Ted's room. Pick another one. So um, Sky was the only one that really couldn't find her room because she was just going on looking at the house, whole house and stuff and grooving to that. And when she found out she wasn't going to really have no room and that she was going to have to sleep on some bunk bed, she was like, uh-uh, I'll just go get me a hotel. And, you know, at least I have a room to myself and my own amenities. And so Caesar was looking for and stuff because he knew she was upset. And then he came and found her. She was in the uh, van that had brought them to the place where they were going to be temporary staying for the convention. He got her out. He said, girl, I ain't, you ain't going nowhere. Y'all acting like kids this and third. I'm going to, you're going to have one of the best rooms and we're just going to let, we got, I need y'all to understand the chain of command because right now y'all don't understand it. So he asked everybody to come to have a group meeting real quick on the outside patio of the house and he breaks it down. He says, it's going to be me first, then it's going to be Ted, then it's going to be Sky, and then it's going to be Walt. And then I think he said, oh shit. Or Richard, as he likes to be known now this season, and then it's the new people, and then it's Donna. <laughs> and of course, Donna didn't like that, but she got to understand where she came from with Caesar, uh, and that long history, and how she's definitely been acting in between time for this particular uh, place they're at now. So, um, So that's just pretty much how it is. And then they go and try to spend some time in the pool. And then Caesar's girl's tattoo babies show up. And she's looking nice or nice to his eyes. And so everything pretty much starts to wind down. And then we go uh, into the next day. And Ted gets like a Instagram alert. And it, it, on his phone is showing that Duchess is going to be in Puerto Rico also for this same convention. And um, she's doing her own thing as well, like a side job. Um, and then Ted passes his phone down so it can reach Caesar. And before it reaches Caesar, Donna gets a hold to it. And she's just making fun of, you know, Caesar's previous girlfriend, previous wife to be. And how, you know, she's going to be showing up. But, you know, it's like all of them are talking in front of Tattoo Baby and not giving her respect. But this is how the crew get down, you know what I'm saying? But Tattoo Baby handled it very well. And um, he was basically uh, asking, she was, but Tattoo Baby started to get to understand, like, you know, what are y'all talking about? Why are y'all leaving me out? I don't know what y'all talking about. And she was like, who is this Duchess or whatnot? And I'm like, okay, Tattoo Baby, you we real cute, but <laughs> come on, you don't know who Duchess is? And, you know, I know you don't. Okay, I'm going to give you that one. I'm going to give you that one. Maybe you're just in your own little world and you just float with whoever you like to float with and ain't no big deal. But, okay, we're going to give you that one. But get a clue. Get a clue real soon, all right? Um, and then she said, well, I want to know what she means to you now, Caesar. Because she was asking him straight up since everybody was clowning on her. So, he, you know, Caesar said, you know, I've moved on. That's it. That's all. We had something. It didn't work out. Boom, boom, boom. I'm here now. She's there. And we just, you know, live a separate lives. So she was okay with that. Then, um, Tattoo Baby go on and try to get on in the pool. And then Caesar follow her. Because he pretty much want to know where her head space is. After all that, that the crew threw her through. And how he answered her and this, that, and third. Leave from that situation, we go to Melanie. Melanie's boyfriend is going with Melanie to Puerto Rico and having, you know, a commitment ceremony because previously uh, they had something, a three-month-old party with uh, one of Melanie's good friends, the baby, and of course, Olaf, uh, something like that. That's Melanie's boyfriend's name. And, you know, she was like, okay, she was feeling herself and everything. She was like, well, okay, when are we getting married? <laughs> And then Mel and his friend was trying to chime in on him, like, yeah, when are y'all getting married? This, that, and the third. And so um, he was, like, being put on the spot. He's like, you know what? Marriage stuff. You know, I like what we have now. You know you mine. I know I'm yours. And, you know, I'm just really worried about the baby. You know, the kids don't always be good. He said, but this marriage thing, that, uh-uh. 
divorce, having lawyers here and there. And the man was like, why are you talk, thinking about all the bad stuff? Why don't you just stay in the good lane where we are now? He said, yeah, because that could, that could transpire. Like I said, I don't know why men get into that. It's more so uh, women want that security. And some men, because you have women acting that way too, like they don't want to get married, they want to live together, this, that, and third. But to me, marriage is a way of showing your love, your commitment, and that you're in it for the long haul unless, you know, uh, death to your part on normal circumstances. You know what I'm saying? But basically, it's like a contractual agreement that I'm with this person and I am deserving of any benefits that either or have, depending on who's left, you know, standing in the marriage. So that's like I say, if you die, do I have death benefits where I can bury you and then have a little something to contain, you know, con to stay in a uh, luxury of lifestyle I've, we've come to uh, understand and live in? Am I going to have benefits to support that? You know, uh, if you're still living, we're together and you have insurance and I don't mean health care. You know, I can't partake of those things unless I have this contract that we are married legally. You know, so it, it was, you know, because there ain't no common law marriage in, in the state of Georgia. So it's just like men don't think about that or some women don't think about that when we're saying we need to have this on paper. Not that we're trying to take out a court, take all your money, just that and the third. It's not about that, at least not for me. So it's just about having security if the person is not there in your life anymore because they died. You know what I'm saying? Not that they fell out of love with you and they got a divorce, you know. Then it, it, it comes to build part two. You know, you have to have a contract. If you make a lot of money, you don't want to get taken to the cleaners, you know, and stuff. So you want everything to be split up equitably. Or if you came in with all the money, you know, leave that person with something, you know, not destitute. But it just is what it is. So he kind of missed the whole bandwagon on that. But they seem like they're free spirit people anyway, like flower child children. Well, you know, it's not going to be a big issue about money, just that third. But, you know, Melanie looked like she bought her coin. So, I don't know. But he committed to her to go to Puerto, Puerto Rico with her and not have a marriage, but have a commitment ceremony. So, she's up to that. But, you know, that's, that's going to last temporary. She don't want that paper sooner or later. Don't kid it yourself. But anyway, we're moving that situation. We go to Duchess. Duchess is getting ready for her live streaming. She's in Puerto Rico. She's there with the people. They're filming her. She's talking to people on social media, and it's going real well for her. Then we have the crew. They're at the convention center to register, to check in. And, of course, <laughs> uh, Caesar goes in to check in for his crew. They're looking at Caesar like, why are you here? What brought you here? You don't have no uh, booth here. And Caesar looking like, yes, I do. We made plans. Ted, speak up. <laughs> And tear and them damn shades. I tell you, I would have took them shades off and threw them in the nearest corner, wall, floor, put my foot on them, whatever. You would have to come and get me off of Ted for embarrassing me this way. Ted, like, uh-uh, I, I filled out the paperwork. <sighs> but the people were just reinforcing what they had said initially to Caesar, that we don't have any paperwork. We don't definitely don't have no funds to secure your spot here. And we're not expecting you, so be gone. <laughs> Poof, you know, make like a ghost and disappear. So, you know, uh, Caesar removed himself from those people, got it, told his crew to follow him. They got in a circle. They started talking. Caesar was trying to tell them how embarrassed he feels, uh, the representation, uh, him being amongst his peers. And they're seeing that he cannot get in, but we're making all this noise like we on. We got it going on, coming into the establishment, and then we look like fools going out. He said, like, y'all gonna have to figure this situation. I'm like, mm. So he asked Ted, what's up? What's going on? He told me he thought Kit had it. <laughs> Kit or a cat or whatever. They're gonna ain't Kit. He, he, he let her handle it. She said, oh, fuck no, don't put this shit on me. That was you. It was your baby. You thought of it. So you were supposed to have taken it from start to finish. And so he was like, oh, man. So Caesar was like, he was real upset. He just left the group. He got um, Tattoo Baby to follow him, and he was apologizing to her about the mix-up and that, you know, he shouldn't have, you know, let Teddy have that responsibility. That's why 113 is where they are now, shut down. But, you know, I was like, see, you know, that's more money that's coming out your pocket to still pay the rent on 113. And you're kind of like funneling money through 113 to support 125 until it gets on its uh, feet, you know, stable enough. 
So I'm like, man, I wouldn't trust Teddy with nothing. Okay, not even the keys to let himself in the building each morning. But it just is what it is. So Teddy makes himself look like a fool as usual, and he makes the group look like a fool. So they all leave. We move to Duchess. Duchess is still doing her thing. She's taking photos. She's taking photos for Facebook and the magazine that asked her to come down the street live in that country. It's it a good scene for uh, Miss Duchess. Then, you know, Caesar's looking for the crew. He don't know where they had went from this morning or this afternoon episode. They ain't got in touch with him, but the crew is really looking for any spot or tattoo spot where they will let them come in and split the profits because they're trying to get their money back from the expense Caesar had to put out to get them all there. Plus the equipment, meaning merchandise that they were supposed to sell at the event that they just made up um, to bring with them. And then all the funds are just not adding up. He's coming into a large deficit being in the red, meaning Caesar. So Ted is running around Puerto Rico trying to see if any tattoo shop will let them come in and tag. And so they could give Caesar some of his money back, if not all. But he didn't let Caesar know this was the plan of action he was going through. He just disappeared with the crew. I'm like, really? Is that what we do? But I don't see Scott with them. So I don't know what Scott. Scott probably went back to the house. <laughs> and was chilling in the pool. I don't know where that girl done went. Or Miss Boo Boo Kitty. But anyway, um, Caesar... Uh, runs into Duchess because he's outside walking around Puerto Rico and over there and they still must be downtown somewhere where they're supposed to have a convention and he runs into Duchess seeing her doing her own thing and um, what's her name Tattoo Baby told him go on get some resolved things finished so y'all can just say goodbye once for all but go on and handle your business and talk to the chick so Caesar tries to go talk to Duchess but she's working understood why would Caesar even go and say, he could have just said, hey, I see you doing your thing. Can we talk after your shoot is finished or whatnot? But he went over there trying to have a conversation like, why you do this? Why you do that? And like, really, see, is it that professional? So that just, you know, says, you know, look, I'm working right now. I don't have time for your little stuff or you being in your feelings, this, that, and the third. So, you know, no, I can't talk with you right now. So then he pops back in and says, okay, look. Then Duchess said, no, nah, honey, go on be with your girl. And then he tells Duchess that that's not my girl, that's my home girl. Like, she's a buddy. Somebody I hang out, have drinks with. We we talk. I'm like, really? Really, sis? But you bumping booties with a baby. You bumping booties, and then you claiming in your confessional she's someone that could be at your right-hand side to enjoy the ride that you're going to take her on and possibly be there forever. Okay? So that's your home girl. Like, oh, okay, okay. And if uh, Tattoo Baby heard that shit. I would have bopped him upside his freaking head and then played like I was gay and tried to pick up Duchess. And you know, he would have the double whammy put on him. Okay, but it was just, you know, it just is what it is. But then we move on. He got his ego bruised. And then he goes back to talk to uh, Tattoo Baby about it. And I'm like, honey, tattoo baby good because I wouldn't have gave you the time of day. I would, while you was over there fussing with her, and I heard that little tidbit, I would have been bouncing in a taxi cab, taking me back to the crib so you could eat humble pie or eat crow when you whenever you get back. And I will let you know what I heard that you know you said on the download to your precious duchess that you said you don't let it go and moved on you know what i'm saying it's been what it was y'all but that was my recap retake on black ink that aired uh it's see on season five episode 11 buenos dias puerto rico all right hope y'all enjoyed it subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already and please share and like my videos guys thank you bye bye